Hello, welcome to episode 2 of Peaky Blinders, season 1, episode 2. Episode 1 was very promising, and uh, yeah, I wonder where it goes. The plan with the um, horse race still stands. Um, what else happened? Yeah, and he, and he has a plan with um, the weapons. I'm not sure what exactly. But yeah. The weapons and the horse race. That's what is this about, I think. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's start the episode. I mean, let's rock. Hang on a minute. You're not swapping the family car for a bloody horse. Of course we're not swapping it. Huh? We're stealing it. You league boys laughing at my brother. Tommy! I asked you a on. question. Tommy, come on, it's just a crack. Jamma huh? Jor. Once he ship she got the lingo, Papa she slingo. Once he lacha Roma. Yeah, but his mouth was a diddy koi ho. Uh oh. That's it. <laughs> They kind of ask for it. <laughs> we will leave no stone unturned. Every gun, every bullet will be brought to me for inspection. Now, take your positions. Hmm. So he's still looking for the guns. I think that's his main concern. So they are just beating up regular people or what? Hmm. Look at this. A prescription for iron tablets for Ida fucking Shelby. Hmm. <laughs> like I said, he will soon be dead. <laughs> Arthur Shelby said you people would help us. Next time, I want to talk to the boss. Lucky t -rums. Friday, 10 o'clock. And when I say the boss, I mean Thomas. <laughs> so even he, he considers Thomas as the boss. You don't read the papers. Rising papers. So let me tell you the odds. I reckon it's three to one there'll be a revolution. I wouldn't bet on that. That cop is betting on it. He's not going to let it rest till he gets those guns back. Hmm. A revolution? Interesting. I'm the reporter with the Birmingham Evening Dispatch. I had a phone call. Someone called Thomas Shelby. Come with me. Hmm. A reporter. There are some things I want you to write down. Now, first of all, it's not the people around here that is loyal to the king. It's the officers. You see, we don't want our beloved king looking down and seeing the things that have been done to us. We went through hell, our king. Walk through the flames of war, write all this down, and now we're being attacked in our own homes. These new coppers over from Belfast, breaking into our homes and interfering with our women, we don't think our king would want to see that happening. <laughs> so we are lasting he, fires he wants to raise to rise, the alarm. Uh, to raise the people against... The cops. Yeah. BSA are on strike. Miners are on strike. IRA are killing our boys. Ten a day. <laughs> Ten a day. <laughs> All right, you want to do this on the street? Let's do it. Whose is it? If I tell you, you'll tell them and they'll cut him to pieces. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Tommy. Just passing it on. Declaration of war. The whole league clan. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Thomas Shelby against the old bloody world, right? Hmm. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe now he uses the guns 
to shoot them all up. So, so he actually has a use for them. For the guns. Okay, so this is the first race. And that specific horse is going to win. Oh, no, she tells him the news, maybe? Tell me the man's name, Ida. Rudolf Valentino. But that's not his name, right? Get yeah. out! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All of you, go on now. Of course he does. Freddy fucking Thorn, your best mates in school, the man who saved your life in France. So go on, go on, cut him, cut him up, and chuck him in the cut. So Monaghan boy finally lost. Mm, oh, okay. Third race. Oh. Already. Ada wants you to give Freddie this letter. She wants Freddie to know she's having his baby. He deserves an opportunity to do the right thing. I say we give them a chance. For a woman who's had a hard life with men. You're still full of romance, eh? What do you think Freddy sees in our Ada? He sees machine guns and rifles and ammunition and some glorious revolution. What is it you really don't like about Freddy? She have no life with a man on the run. If you can't see that, you can't see much. Tell Ada, Freddy went to America. Well, he'd do no good for Ada to bring a baby into the world alone. Paul, listen. The truth is, you would have hit me with that thing if it weren't for the fact that you know I'm right! <laughs> he doesn't... He doesn't give him a chance to do the right thing, as she said. So how would he know that he's right or not? <laughs> Freddy Thorne is at the very top of my list. I'll cross him off. He won't be returning to the city. I'll make him part of our deal. What deal? You and your specials will leave my businesses alone from now on. No more raids into our territory. No more smashing up pubs. No more lifting my runners. You will turn a blind eye to all of my gambling operations. Also, I am planning an expansion onto the racetracks. I intend to do business with Billy Kimber. He runs most of the legal tracks I'm betting outside of London. He has policemen on his payroll. I want you to put in a word with the Chief Inspector of Gloucestershire that his men should leave me alone when I make my move. Forgive me, I don't seem to have a pen to write down this rather long list of demands. get in return I have what you're looking for hmm will you give him his I have the guns uh -oh. so he will give the gun guns to him oh, interesting I'm guessing they sent you to Birmingham to get those guns back well to me that hasn't <laughs> all right I left word with men I trust that if I am taken into police custody for whatever reason those guns will be shipped to Liverpool. From there, they will be sent directly to Belfast and sold to the Irish Republican Army. All your good work in Ireland will be undone. Each stolen weapon is numbered and marked. If I sell them to the IRA, it won't be long before Mr. Churchill finds out. I imagine you got into enough trouble over the burning of the King's photographs. That was just a taster. If those guns reach Belfast, your life in the force is over. When I've achieved what I've set out to achieve, I will let you know where to find the guns. You'll be a hero. You'll 
Probably get a medal. Do we have a deal? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> In other words, he blackmailed him. You must do everything you can to get close to him. Find out where those guns are heading. Of course, when I say everything, I don't mean. <laughs> Underestimate me in every way. <laughs> yeah. That's his only way out. To find the guns before he actually takes the deal. Because I think it's everything he stands against. Because if he takes the deal, he's also corrupt. And he doesn't like that. <laughs> So those lead bastards cursed him. No, no, no. Whatever it is, he says it. Spread to the other feet. It's going to his heart by tomorrow, I say. Seen curses like this twice. Can't take them back, Tom. No. <sighs> he's, I mean, he still has the guns. <laughs> and I still think he will uh, shoot them with the guns. Tommy got a message to me. Said, get out of town, take her with you. So, <laughs> Ada Shelby, you told me we'll kill him. <laughs> we're gonna stay here, we're gonna marry him. I'm not afraid of Tommy Shelby. Hmm, okay. Oh, huh. Holy shit. It's Billy Kimber. <laughs> By the way, which one am I talking to? Who's the boss? Well, I'm the oldest. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Are you laughing at my brother? <laughs> which one am I talking to? Which one of you is the boss? I'm Mr. Kimber's advisor and accountant. And I'm the fucking boss, OK? <laughs> Look at it. That is my name, Minnis. It. It's from the Lee family. You were also at war with the Lees, Mr. Kimber, am I right? Hmm. The Lees are attacking your bookies and taking your money. Your men can't control them. You need help. Right, the Lees are doing a lot of talking at the fairs. They have a lot of kin. They are saying the racetracks are easy meets because the police are busy with strikes. Now, we have connections. We know how they operate. Together we can beat them, divided, maybe not. I admire you, Mr. Kimber. You started with nothing and built a legitimate business. It would be an honor to work with you, Mr. Kimber. Hmm, okay. Now we got a partner, a potential partner. And he still has the guns. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Episode two. Okay. See you at the review. All right. That was it. That was episode two of season one. Yeah. So for Thomas, the situation getting more and more serious. Now he has a partner. Which he can work together. Mm. <laughs> he blackmailed the inspector. And he's also now um, under pressure to, f to find the guns. To not take the deal. Yeah. That's interesting. And then there's Freddy, <laughs> which seem seem to be a little stupid, <laughs> um, because he he now decided to stay, and he knows what, or he should know what uh, Thomas is uh, capable of. And I see conflict there. I see 
Maybe it's not killing him, but uh, breaking some bones or something. <laughs> I don't know. But I can imagine that. Yeah, and I don't think that he kills him now. Because, uh, I mean, he's the father of his uh, nephew. His future nephew. So I think he will hurt him a little and <laughs> that's it, to be honest. But who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Many open questions. But uh, <laughs> this uh, excites me for the next episode. Yeah, that's it. I would say see you next episode. Bye bye.